Hi and welcome back to Garfin's Creation. Today at Garfin's Creation, we'll be making the East Indian wedding special, Varias. It is also called as Boka Sevare. This fantastic Varia recipe is contributed by my sister Gloria and D'Souza. So we'll be making this recipe together. It's very easy to prepare and a must have for East Indian weddings. You'll find the list of all the ingredients in the description box below. We'll begin by preparing the flour for the varias. That I've taken half a cup urad dal, also called as black gram dal. Next, I'll be taking half a cup of rice and half a cup of chana dal, also called as split chickpeas. First, we need to wash this thoroughly, then dry it and then make a powder out of it. So now I have washed all these, I'll just spread them over a tray. I'll spread them individually so that it's easy to grind later. This is how traditionally the East Indian varias were made. All the lentils and rice were washed thoroughly, dried and then made into a powder in the mill. So now I'll keep this in the sun to get dried completely. And we'll also let the rice and the chana dal dry too. Since it's very hot these days, it just took me a few hours to get this completely dried. Now once this is completely dried, we need to make a powder out of it. If you're making larger quantities, you can grind them at the mill too. So I'm just using the small jar of the mixer grinder and adding the chana dal first. I'll just try to make a fine powder out of it. After making it into a powder, I'll just add it all into a bowl. And you can see how fine this is. You can grind it as fine as you can. But this is a little bit grainy, but that's okay. Next, I'll be grinding the urad dal and the rice as well. We will not be sieving these lentils and rice atta, so try to make it as fine as possible. Now you can also check the texture of the urad dal that we have ground. We need to combine all the flours together. So I will be adding this urad dal flour too in the same bowl where I had placed the chana atta. And now lastly, I will be also grinding the rice. I have used the fine rice here. You can use any white rice here. Avoid the parboil or the basmati rice. So I will grind the rice too as fine as possible. So I will be emptying the rice flour too into the same bowl. You can check out the texture of the rice too. It is as fine. This will give a nice bite when the varias are ready. Now once the flours are added into the same bowl, I will just give it a nice mix. You can grind and keep this flour ready and make the varias whenever you want to. Now once this is well mixed, we will need to measure this flour. I will be using a 200 ml cup and I will just measure it and transfer it to another bowl. So this is the first cup and the second cup is a little bit less than full. So you get approximate 2 cups of flour after it is ground. So now you can see this is a little bit less than 2 cups. Why we need to measure this is we need to take the same equal amount of all purpose flour or maida. So now in the same bowl I will be saving approximate 2 cups of all purpose flour. In place of all purpose flour, you can also use whole wheat flour. The varias get a good soft texture when you are using maida as compared to whole wheat flour. So you can replace the all purpose flour with whole wheat flour too. So I have taken approximate 2 cups of all purpose flour and sieved it into the same bowl. So I will be adding 1 tablespoon of sugar and 1 teaspoon of salt. Now we need to mix all the ingredients together. That is all the flour, the salt and the sugar. Once this is done, 
we'll just keep it aside and we will activate the yeast. To activate the yeast, I have taken one cup of warm water. Water should not be too very hot. And to this, I'll be adding one tablespoon of grain sugar. I'll just mix the sugar and the water a little bit till the sugar is a little bit dissolved and add one teaspoon of yeast. I'm going to use dry yeast here. You can also use fresh yeast if available. I'll just spread it on the water and give it a nice mix. And now we will let this activate and this will take around 5 to 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, the yeast is well activated. When it gets frothy, it means it's ready to use. I'll just make a small well into the flour what we had kept ready earlier and add the yeast into it. You can also use instant dry yeast. Then there is no need of activating the yeast and you can use it directly into the flour. So now I'll be kneading this into a soft sticky dough. So I've taken another one cup of warm water and be adding it gradually till I get a nice sticky dough from this. We do not have to make the batter too very runny as then it would be difficult to form the varias. So add the water gradually till you get a nice sticky dough and not too very runny as well. So now I'll be adding the rest of the water too. The water quantity will depend on the flour that is the all purpose flour too so add it gradually. So now you can see how sticky this is and I'll be kneading this for another 5 to 8 minutes. Once the dough has come together, just gather it together and just knead it and also knead to pull it up and bang it back into the bowl. This will make the dough nice and airy and will also rise up soon. So I have used approximate 1 full cup of water for kneading this. And then after kneading this dough for around 7 to 8 minutes, we will let the dough rest. So now after kneading this for some time, we can see how the dough, the texture is, it's quite sticky. But it is not at all runny. So I'll just dip my hand in some water and just gather the dough together in the center and press it down. Traditionally when the dough was kneaded, they used to make a large cross over the batter and then let it ferment. So I'll just be poking some holes with my finger and let this dough rise. It will take around 3 to 4 hours for it to double in size. Also depending on how hot the weather is. It took me around 2 and a half hours for it to get rise and to double in size. Once it's well risen, just dip your hand into the water and gather the dough into the center. And then flatten it again to knock off the air. Now we will let this rise again for around 15 to 20 minutes. So now it's time to fry the varias. For that I've heated a pan and taken sufficient oil for deep frying. Check whether your oil is ready. Just drop a little piece of the dough into it. It should float immediately on top. That means your oil is ready. Now I will just reduce the flame to medium. We can see that the dough is risen again. Just gather it into the center and we'll start making the varias. To make the varias a boka chivare, just dip your hand into the water and take a small portion of the dough. Now roll the dough well so that there are no cracks and you get a smooth ball and then flatten it a little. Once it's shaped well, make a hole into the center using a finger. This is the same way as you do mendu varas too. And now immediately we will drop it into the hot oil. So we can see again the next time whenever you start doing the varias again, you need to wet your hands and take a portion and make it into a round ball, flatten it and make a hole into the center and drop it into the oil. Once you have dropped the varias into the oil, they come floating up. Now we will fry this till they are nice and golden brown. This will take approximate 2 minutes to get a nice color and also to keep flipping it in between so that it gets evenly colored. You need to maintain the temperature of the oil so if you feel the varias are getting dark too soon just reduce the flame. So I'll continue frying all of the varias on medium flame 
and also keep flipping them till they get a golden color on both the sides. These varias can be had for breakfast, lunch, dinner or also with tea. Traditionally, they are served at all weddings along with Vindalo, Sarpatel and also Fugias. I do have a detailed video on how to make Fugias on my channel. So I'll put the link in the description box below just in case you would like to try that as well. So now I'll just remove these once they get a nice golden brown. To drain off the excess oil, I'll just place them on the kitchen tissue paper. This varia recipe is not too very sweet. So you can have it along with tea as well as other food items as well. So I'll continue making the rest of the varias in the same way. I hope you found this video useful and you too will try it at your place. If you have made varias in a different way, do let me know in the comments below. I would really like to know that as well. It's really nice of you to keep watching all of my Garfield's Creations videos. Do subscribe to Garfield's Creation for more such videos. I'll see you soon in the next video too. Till then, keep watching. Take care. Bye-bye.